This comment says, where in the Bible was a Gentile under the law? Since you asked nicely. Numbers chapter 15. For the assembly there shall be one statute for you and for the stranger, or Gentile, who sojourns with you a statute forever throughout your generations. You and the sojourner shall be alike before the Lord. One law and one rule shall be for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you. Exodus chapter 12, there shall be one law for the native and for the stranger who sojourns among you. Isaiah 56, and the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast to my covenant. These I will bring into my holy mountain and make them joyful in the house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. Numbers chapter 9, And if a stranger sojourns among you and would keep the Passover of the Lord according to the statute of the Passover and according to its rule, he shall do. You shall have one statute for both the sojourner and for the native. Leviticus 24, You shall have the same rule for the sojourner and for the native, for I am the Lord your God. Exodus 20, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner, the Gentile, who is within your gates. Deuteronomy chapter 5, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no work. No ordinary work. You and your son and your daughter and your male servant and your female servant, your ox, your donkey, your livestock, and the sojourner who is within your gates. Deuteronomy 16. Then you shall keep the feast of weeks to the Lord your God with the tribute of the free will offering from your hand, which you shall give to the Lord your God who blesses you. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your son and your daughter and your male servant and your female servant, and the Levite who is within your towns, the sojourner, the fatherless, the widow, who are among you at the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name dwell there. You shall keep the Feast of Booths seven days when you have gathered to produce from your threshing floor and your wine press. You shall rejoice in feast, you, your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, the Levite, the sojourner, Gentile, the fatherless, and the widow who are within your towns. Leviticus 16, it shall be a statute forever that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict yourselves and you shall do no work, either the native or the stranger who sojourns among you. Leviticus 17, and you shall say to them, in one of the house of Israel or of the stranger who sojourns among you, who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice and does not bring into the entrance of the tent of meeting an offering to the Lord, that man shall be cut off from his people. Deuteronomy 31, assemble the people, men, women, little ones, and the Gentile within your towns, that they may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God and be careful to do all the words of this law. Deuteronomy chapter 7, know therefore the Lord your God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. I really hope you guys are starting to see the pattern here that God doesn't show partiality, that there's always been just one law for everybody who wants to serve God. I got more if you want, but I feel like this is sufficient. For now, let's just look up the definition of partiality. Unfair bias. In favor of one thing or person compared to another, i.e. favoritism. There cannot be a different law for Gentiles and Jews or for Israel or whatever other category of people you want to throw in there. If there is a different law for different people, then by definition, God shows partiality. But the Bible says this. Acts 10, so Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right, according to God, not your own definition, is acceptable to him. That means anyone that fears him and keeps his commandments is acceptable to him. And his commandments apply to everyone because he shows no partiality. Romans chapter 2, for God shows no partiality. Galatians chapter 2, God shows no partiality. 2 Chronicles 19, Now then, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Be careful what you do, for there is no injustice with the Lord our God, no partiality or taking bribes. 
it can't both be true. God either shows no partiality and has one law for everyone, or he shows partiality and lied in the Bible. I'm going to go ahead and believe God and believe scripture when he says there's one law for everyone a bunch of times. And all of scripture, Old and New Testament, say he shows no partiality. This whole different law for different people thing, or that there's a new standard for people in the New Testament that wasn't there in the Old Testament, is completely... 100% unscriptural, unbiblical, not something you're going to find in the Bible. Those ideas came from the mind of men that want to make an excuse to say, oh, we don't have to keep God's commandments anymore. Sounds awful familiar to something that the serpent said to Adam and Eve in the beginning of the Bible. No, there's no consequences for breaking God's commandments. No, there's a new standard. It's okay. You won't be punished. I mean, even though God says you'll be punished, don't worry about it. Same playbook, and people are still falling for it. Satan's done good work in the church because people aren't reading their Bibles, and people aren't doing what God asked us to do, and people are not walking in the footsteps of our Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach. They're not walking in his footsteps. They're not being obedient to God. They're not even trying, and they're not acknowledging that they're sinning against him, and it's going to cost a lot of people. Isaiah 66, For behold, the Lord will come in fire, and his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger in fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire will the Lord enter into judgment, and by his sword with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Matthew chapter 7, Enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Matthew 19, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. Matthew 22, for many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew 13, just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into fiery furnace in the place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine in the kingdom of their Father. The Bible's pretty clear about what happens to sinners and lawbreakers. So perhaps you should start acknowledging the front of your Bible if you would like to enter life. That is, after all, what Jesus said is necessary to get into the kingdom. And I'm going to go ahead and trust Jesus over the doctrine that your pastors and preachers have been teaching people, leading him on that broad path to destruction. And just in case you still don't believe that the commandments in the beginning of the Bible apply to you, Let's see how Jesus felt about them. John chapter 5. For if you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? It seems to me that most Christians don't believe his words, and they don't believe what God gave to Moses in the beginning of the Bible. Because Jesus is the one that tells you to keep the commandments a lot of times. And nobody's listening to him. Looks to me like the path to destruction is very broad. And Jesus was right when he said, few there would be that find it. Well, there it is. You have the truth now. The real question is, what are you going to do with it? Hebrews chapter 10. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. No more excuses. It's time to repent. Luke chapter 13. No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Do you believe Jesus now? 